the bottom line is that as municipal engineers or as engineers developing contracts, we want to prepare a quality job that's going to be bid at a low price. Materials change, construction methods change, uh, you know, the uh, new type of equipment being used. So, you know, there's a continuous change in technology. The standards got to keep pace with that. There was a particular need to adopt a uniform set of standards in this area because of the great confusion of municipal boundaries and, and, and uh, trying to get one contractor to come in and work in various municipalities. You weren't sure that every subcontractor that priced you had in fact seen the latest drawings that he was supposed to be bidding on for the particular municipality that he was uh, bidding in. The rapid construction of highways, roads, and municipal systems and services in Ontario over the past half century has resulted in a province-wide infrastructure that is the envy of the world. More than 21,000 kilometers of highways, 140,000 kilometers of roads, and municipal services in almost 900 communities serving a population of over 10 million are the result of pioneering developments in research, design, construction, and maintenance by Ontario engineers and technicians. But while this unprecedented growth has inspired an entrepreneurial vigor among the various regions, the same development has created a wide variety of standard drawings and specifications across the province. And although it may seem comfortable from the vantage point of an individual office to use its own standards, it is not expedient from a business point of view and is affecting the ability of contractors and municipalities to be cost efficient while working to the highest standards. This is very difficult, I think, for the, the contracting community um, because they can come from one municipality in the morning to a second municipality in the afternoon and be doing something that uh, is not acceptable. They tend to have for instance, curb forms specific to municipal specs, and so they're very limited in where they can bid. They're very limited in where they can purchase used equipment. In the past, we have had to manufacture to each municipality's specifications. This would be a specific number of castings in a design different to, to the next municipality. Uh, it was a hand-catered order right through the plant, and deliveries because of this often got extended. Ontario has a record for leadership in the standardization field. Our metrification program, developed through a government-private sector partnership over 20 years ago to answer an earlier need for standardization, has proven to be a model for others to emulate. The time has come for that same leadership and cooperation in the standardization of drawings and specifications for road building and municipal construction. It's time for a new standard of excellence in Ontario, OPS, the Ontario Provincial Standards for Roads and Municipal Services. The Ontario Provincial Standards are the joint effort of the Municipal Engineers Association and the Ministries of Transportation and the Environment, with input and support from manufacturers and the associations of the road building, sewer and water main, and electrical contractors and the consulting engineers of Ontario. The framework developed for OPS has modernized and simplified the procedures for calling tenders, bidding and awarding contracts for public works projects. The OPS documentation, when it's included in your, in your contract, provides a, a consistent uh, method of, of portraying information or passing the information on to the contractor. Uh, the contracts are thus becoming less bulky and uh, uh, a lot easier to understand. 
when you open up a, a new document and you see that they're working to OPSS and OPSD standards, you know that without specific changes in the uh, general conditions or special conditions, you have been working with this uh, over the past years and it it's allows you to, uh, to sort of bid quickly and uh, keep your records to a minimum. Standardization encourages more cost-effective construction and manufacturing methods, reduces inventory, and provides uniformity in contract interpretation and arbitration. Converting to OPS means we all speak a common language, and that means easier, better communication between governments, consultants, contractors, and manufacturers. You'll get out and you'll meet with a supplier and he'll say, uh, well, it, we've always supplied it that way and it looks good to me. And you say, well, and no, it doesn't look quite what I was after. And how do you resolve a situation like that? Whereas if you, you've got something cut and dried, uh, like a sieve analysis, uh, it, it meets the spec or it doesn't. If you're working with 50 different set of specifications in 50 communities, they're, they're subject to 50 ways of interpretation. If you're using with one set of specifications in 50 communities, then after a period of time, if there are any disputes, uh, they tend to narrow down very quickly. The contractors know what they're bidding. They've been involved in the process of developing the standards. They're familiar with them. It allows them to bid across the province and know what they're getting into. So, manufacturers can work with the knowledge that their products will appeal to a broader area of need. If there's a work shortage in one area, engineers and consultants working with one set of rules feel confident going into new municipalities because the rules are the same. And contractors can operate without factoring security into their prices to cover unfamiliar job specifications. Converting to OBS would appear to be profitable and painless. There was certainly some uh, minor uh, original reluctance uh, to, to switch simply because the, the uh, technologists and engineers were not familiar uh, with the new uh, specs. When the OPS standards came out, we just bit the bullet and decided to adopt them uh, all at once, uh, uh, simply switch over from one system to the other. And the way that was accomplished from that particular date onward, uh, all the construction contracts that were being prepared just switched to using the uh, OPS. Staff can, can become very familiar with the new standards in a very short period of time. We've used the OPS specifications and drawings as soon as they were published. When they first came out from the, uh, from the, uh, the joint committee, we've, we've adopted them and we've used them in just about every municipality that we work in. Obviously, the timing and the rate at which OPS standards are incorporated into the work stream will vary among organizations. But the fact remains that converting to OPS is smart business today and will pay even greater dividends in the future. Uh, you have new employees coming in, new graduates, and they rather deal with one set of documents which has a good track record and can be improved consistently rather than having to deal with old standards, existing standards, modification standards, and all kind of standards. There's going to be a real advantage to, to having training programs set up with OPS in mind. And it'll mean a significant cost saving in terms of training your employees. And I, I would just like to stress that, that you can take advantage of, of sharing the costs with other municipalities, with other contractors through the MEA. Increasing environmental concerns will result in a host of upgraded design, construction, and maintenance standards requiring R&D efforts beyond the scope of a single municipality. OPS specialty committees are in the position to evaluate the latest criteria for roads and municipal services, establishing standards that will keep the province at the forefront of environmentally sound technology. Environmental issues are just one single uh, concern that we have now, which two years ago were considerably less than they are at present. And those have to be recognized because construction has to take into account environmental matters. 
and it has meant that there's a lot more regulation with respect to particularly working underground and the information that's needed with regard to environmental issues must be passed on to the contractor as a condition and, and requirement of executing the contract. Still more ideas will be needed to manage Ontario's growth as we head into the 21st century. To better integrate OPS into the modern work environment, OPS Online, an electronic database and diskette versions of the standards are now available. The key aspect of OPS Online means that there will be instant availability of the information, of the latest information available to the users at their computer. The computer system includes a, a menu structure that allows the user to walk through, use the computer to review the most up-to-date version of the specifications. They can simply select that specification or they can select a list of specifications, download it to their computer either in a simple text form or in a word-perfect form that's suitable for contract printing. The inspectors on the site will, will eventually be able to uh, look at a, at a computer screen in their, in their field trailer or in their, in their construction office or in their car and they'll be able to com communicate with the, the designer and the engineer back in the office. Uh, you'll, you'll both be able to look at the same standard drawing when it's, when it's called up on the screen. We are looking forward to the OPS coming out in a, in a computerized format so that uh, we can call up the standards on the screens uh, you know, by the designers rather than having to leaf through the, the books uh, manually. Uh, also, if, if the uh, system is updated regularly, you know that when you're calling up the screen, it, it's the most current, whereas you never know for sure whether someone has inserted the latest pages in a book. The Ontario Provincial Standards for Roads and Municipal Services. We encourage you to participate in the further development of this common language for our industry and the new standard for excellence in the province. So we would urge that the municipalities adopt the OPS as much as possible as they have been written originally and allow the review process which has been, been established uh, to take care of any changes that they feel are needed from time to time. Well, I would say definitely convert to the OPS specs. There's, uh, I don't think there is a downside. There's, a, it's all beneficial to them. Uh, they'll have people that can work from one municipality to the next and uh, give them the quality product that they, they want. Building to the OPS standards, it's a, a well-defined standard and you should be taking advantage of the best knowledge at the time. And again, that's going to ensure that, that your projects are requiring less maintenance. You're not back there a year later having to, to dig something up because it's something new you've tried. What you're using, if you're using OPS, has been tried and has been found to work.